Well, going into this week, there was no doubt about it. The biggest matchup was the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Many people were talking about it being a potential Super Bowl preview. They're two of the best teams in the NFL. And the matchup did not disappoint. It came down to a game-winning field goal as time expired with Justin Tucker. Really just a great game. And so, there was a lot of things you could definitely talk about. I mean, I think the biggest matchup that people were looking forward to seeing was Lamar Jackson against the San Francisco defense and seeing how that was going to play out. But I actually thought the key difference in this game was the Baltimore Ravens' pass defense. I thought the fact that they really shut down the San Francisco 49ers' passing attack was really the reason they were able to pull off this victory, and an element of that was just simply the fact that it was, you know, raining, so you have to run the ball a lot, but they actually played really good football, they played really smart football, and I think that's the main reason the Baltimore Ravens were able to pick up a big win. And it wasn't just with them playing good football, because they have talented players all across the board, but what I really liked about it was they played smart football, and this plays a good example of that. Actually, this plays a great example of that. They're going to be in a cover one man situation, so it's going to be a cover one blitz actually, man coverage, meaning that Earl Thomas is going to take away the deep part of the field, and then everyone else just a man coverage situation. So relatively simple, but that's the way Baltimore is going to attack San Francisco on this play. But what I find very interesting is look at what's going on right there in between Earl Thomas and Marcus Peters. Earl Thomas is saying something to Peters, and what I think he's telling him is be aware of a slant route, which makes some sense. Just be aware of a route cutting in. That's something you would expect to be aware of in this situation. But what I find very fascinating is he's not talking about the receiver who he's lined up against. That might be a little bit confusing, but I'll show you what the two receivers on the top half of the screen will be running. It's those routes right there. And so for Peters, he should be cutting over to the middle of the field. However, Earl Thomas has probably been watching a lot of tape and knows that Garoppolo likes to hit the receiver on the top half of the screen, you know, closer to the sideline. So he's telling Peters, hey, don't be afraid to break in that direction and try to make a play on this ball. It's something you could look to. So that way, after the ball is snapped and there is a receiver who's going to get open, Peters does have to be aware of his own assigned man, but at the same time, he can now make a break on this play. And also, since him and Earl Thomas knew that this is something Peters might do, now Earl Thomas is prepared to make a tackle if Garoppolo does figure this out. That way, when Garoppolo does hit the receiver he wants to hit, Peters is able to run up there and help knock that ball away. Just, just really a smart play, I thought, by Peters and also by Earl Thomas. I mean, that's why they pay Earl Thomas all that money. His talent might not be what it once was, but he's still pretty talented and also just... Having him, you know, having his brain out there just does so much for the Ravens. It's actually a bit reminiscent of, if you remember, Ray Lewis's last season when Ray Lewis clearly wasn't the player he once was, but he was still good enough, and the fact that he had such an intelligent brain was able to make him still a very effective player, even though his talent might not have been as good as it once was. There was also this play I liked, where what's going to happen is, really, that's the key matchup I'm going to want to take a look at. It's going to be George Kittle going up against Tyus Bowser, which... Obviously, on paper, is a matchup that you would think favors San Francisco. George Kittle was one of the best route-running tight ends in the league, and just one of the best tight ends in the league in general. And that's the route he's going to run, which could definitely get open, and it is where Garoppolo is going to want to take a look at. But after the ball is snapped, if you notice, Bowser's doing a pretty good job of keeping pace with Kittle. I mean, definitely Kittle has a little bit closer of an edge to the sideline, but that doesn't really matter too much. I mean, either Garoppolo can throw it closer towards the line of scrimmage, but at that point, you're not gaining many yards. And if he does try to hit Kittle, well, then Bowser could run over and undercut it. So, really just great positioning by Bowser more than anything. Garoppolo makes his throw anyways, which is regrettable, because Bowser is able to run over and knock it away, and he al honestly almost intercepted that one, and he could have intercepted that one. That could have easily been a pick six. Maybe if it wasn't raining, he would have been able to get the pick six, who knows. But either way, you gotta take that. You gotta take the fact that a linebacker can make sure that he can cover the great George Kittle, because... When that happens, it just makes everything else so much easier. It was just that. It was just Ravens playing good fundamental football. That's really all that it was. That that was really the key way they were able to beat the 49ers, especially their defense was able to beat the 49ers offense. This one's another good example of something like that. This matchup is going to be Marcus Peters going up against Emmanuel Sanders. So two players who started the season on two different teams and... So you would think, you know, for the 49ers, this is why you signed Emmanuel Sanders, to be able to beat guys like Peters in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And for Sanders, that's the route he's running. So he's going to fake as though he's going towards the middle of the field, but 
then he's going to just go straight up, and hopefully that's how this play could work for the 49ers, especially going up against Peters, because we all know Peters gets a little jumpy. Peters loves to, you know, jump in front of routes, get some interceptions. He will get burned by doing that. That's kind of been his history as a player, no matter what team he's been on. Except for the Ravens, actually, because watch how when Sanders kind of fakes as though he's cutting in, Peters totally isn't fooled, and... To me, this is one of the few times I've seen Peters not get fooled by a move. It seems like he's always getting fooled by everything, but he's talented enough to still make it work sometimes, and he gets a lot of interceptions by cutting in front of those types of moves. But instead, he stays back, doesn't get fooled, and Garoppolo throws the ball in that direction, but it was never going to be complete anyways. Peters just gave up absolutely no room whatsoever. Really good play by him. Honestly, for opposing teams, that's a scary sign when Marcus Peters isn't getting fooled by moves, because if he could sort of take away the fact that he gets burned a lot, he would really be an elite corner. I mean, that's been his biggest problem, and if he can sort of move on from that and improve on that, he could be scary in that Ravens uh, secondary, and I do think that coaching probably has something to do with it. Sometimes when you're in the right system, things work out well for you, and that has happened so far for Baltimore, for Marcus Peters. They're playing well as a unit. It's that simple, and here we'll show you that. It's going to be cover one hole right now, and those are the routes that the 49ers are going to be running, so really the two deep routes are the ones that could get the most open. Those are the routes that Garoppolo is going to want to take a look at. First, you're going to look at the one on the bottom half of the screen, as you see once this ball is snapped, but it's just not really going to be open. I mean, his receiver could run an out route here. You might want to consider that, but that's not what the route on paper is supposed to be, so you can't really, you know, it's kind of revisionist history now to say he should go out because Garoppolo could take a shot down the middle, and if he doesn't run that, then it could just be an interception, so it's too risky to change it up now. You kind of just have to run the route you're going to run, and with all that space there, there is no way this is going to work. And also, if he did run an out route, I actually do trust that the Ravens corner would have been able to jump it and potentially intercept it, so... Either way, whatever this route is, Baltimore is in pretty good shape because since that receiver is going to continue running towards the middle of the field, now there's a safety deep who can simply try to take that away. So really Garoppolo, he can't make a throw in that direction. It's essentially a double team at this point. But of course, if there's only one safety deep, then what do you do? I mean, you look at see where he's going. He's going to the bottom half of the screen. Well, then you look to the top half of the screen. However, when Garoppolo looks to the top half of the screen, that receiver isn't open either. Garoppolo still fires it there, but it just isn't able to be complete. It's really tremendous coverage by that one. That was Jimmy Smith right there, who's a great corner, as we all know. And he really, he shut him down on that one. And that's what Baltimore can do, is they can shut guys down. I mean, really, Jimmy Smith can take your best guy, and then you can just double-team anybody else. It's really hard to get some yards when Baltimore is playing on, and Baltimore was absolutely playing on against the 49ers. There was one last way the secondary really came through when it mattered, and this was in a huge moment. There's seven and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. It's a third down and four, and the 49ers are just on the outside of field goal range right here. They could consider kicking a field goal from this far. They could also consider going for it if they don't get it, but they wouldn't actually do either of those. They would get stopped, spoiler alert, but Here's how they would get stopped. That's where the first down marker is, and they're just going to have one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board in terms of blocking, and then it's going to be a run to the bottom half of the screen. That's the way this play is going to work for San Francisco. But the key thing to look at is take a look at Brandon Carr and take a look at how quickly he realizes what's going on, and it's going to try to break in on this one. So usually at this point, just the offensive lineman is in charge of getting out making sure he blocks him, giving his running back plenty of space, but because Brandon Carr broke in so quickly, now not just an offensive lineman, but also a defensive back is going to try to make sure that he blocks him. But even with that, he's going to kind of just plant down, and basically the halfback just runs over him because he put himself in good position. That allowed him to get the stop. That made it fourth down and one, and that was actually a key point in the game. That was the last defensive play of the game. The Ravens were able to just completely run out the clock and kick a game-winning field goal. It was that simple. I think it's a scary time when you have the Baltimore Ravens having an MVP candidate on offense and also they're the Ravens. They seemingly always have at least pieces on defense. I do think that their offense is better than their defense, but their defense is coming through in big ways as of late weeks. I mean, they haven't given up more than 20 points in the past seven games, and that includes playing the Texans, the 49ers, the Rams, the Seahawks. I mean, they've played some tough teams, but their defense is showing up. I feel like everyone freaked out when Nick Chubb ran all over them way back when, when the Browns were actually looking like they might make the playoffs, but 
it doesn't really matter at this point because the Baltimore Ravens defense has gotten better as the season has gone on. It's peaking at the right time, and I personally will not be betting against them in any postseason game, largely due to Lamar Jackson and that offense, but not only because of that, also because of their defense. Their defense is playing very well. So yeah, that's what I thought of the Ravens. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching.